Hi there, this is Crystal and I'm back with another 12 by 12 layout for Hip Kit Club using the May 2019 kits. Um, today's layout is based on a sketch. So this is this week's sketch and please just ignore <laughs> my little scribbles over here. Apparently I use this as a um, scratch paper at some point. But um, this is the sketch, like I said, designed by Jody King. I think I'm actually going to be flipping it. This is the photo I want to use and because it's um, it's portrait in, instead of uh, landscape, I think I'm going to flip the sketch and, and do it this way instead. Uh, for my background, I know I want to use just plain white cardstock. This is the Avalanche Basil Textured Cardstock from the Cardstock Kit and I've already applied gesso and you can see when I did, um, I must have gotten some of the Lindy's powders on the paper. So when I applied the gesso, it, it added some color already. But lucky for me, today's assignment is to add mixed media to my page, so I'm just gonna go with it. I'm gonna use this as my starting point and add mixed media in these areas to kind of cover up the mess that's already on here. Um, so that is all I know for sure to start. I am going to put you on fast forward and get started. So in the interest of full disclosure, I have to say that this is actually the second layout I've made for this assignment using this sketch. Um, somehow the first one didn't record, so uh, I just started over and um, tried something new. But that's why you see everything already out on my desk and why I have some of the mixed media already mixed up there to the side. So. Um, that's what happened. No big deal. I still have another layout I can show you guys at some other point. There just isn't a video for it. So what I'm doing right now, um, so like I said, I had already gessoed the background of this paper um, and I just sprayed it with some water, just plain water. That's what that is right there. And then I sprinkled some of the uh, magical powders on top of it. Um, and then I'm just using my brush and kind of moving the paper around to get a more organic feel uh, to our, our movement to the liquid and then I did dry that with a heat gun um, because I was thinking that I didn't want them to mix. I actually end up regretting that. Um, I, I really wish I had let them mix um, but I fix it and you'll see that here in a second. So I'm doing the same thing with the blue. Well actually I, I put the blue on a piece of packaging and then I'm just painting it because I wanted it in particular areas. I didn't want it to go all over so I had more control by just using um, a little bit of packaging and mixing it there and then using a brush to add it to the page. So here's how I'm going to fix the fact that I, I dried them instead of letting them, them mix. Um, so I added a little bit of the pink powder to the blue that was already on that packaging and uh, added some more water and I got this purple color which is what I would have gotten if they had mixed on the paper. Um, and I'm just adding it not to where they would naturally mix where the two colors meet and into the areas just around there uh, just to add some of that in between color it looked too stark it looked too um, abrupt of a change between the pink and the blue so this helps um, kind of make that a more gradual transition so I dried that again it's completely dry now and I'm just going to trim off the branding strip for this paper and um, now I'm ready to start actually making the, the pieces of the layout. So in the sketch there are two tags and that's what I'm working on right now. I'm trying to decide what paper I want to use. And I have this um, bit of, of the paper from All Heart, um, the striped paper, and it's actually the inside. So I had used it to um, use it as a border on, on the last layout that I made. And um, now I'm just using that piece that I gutted from the inside of it to cut these two tags. And those tags that I was using as templates are just ones from my stash. I um, actually made one to a three by four size for another project and the other one's just an old Pebbles um, tag from an old collection. I just traced those and uh, made sure to trace the circle where the hole goes. Uh, I almost forget that every single time. But um, I, have, I did eventually get it and uh, I cut those down and just erased the pencil lines around it. And now I'm just trying to decide which side of the paper I want to use. I really like them both. I love the rainbows, but I also love that stripe. And I, I'm just not sure which side I want to use yet. So um, I'm just gonna leave them sit there for a while while I, I work on the rest of the layout so that I can decide as I start adding other elements to the page. So next I'm gonna work on um, the title. I think I was, <laughs> I think I was um, trying to decide. I knew I needed something on that um, 
the tag on the right hand side of the page and I was trying to look for something so that um, I thought maybe I could move the title and put it up there but I couldn't really find anything that that worked and I, I really wanted to make my own title because um, I had a very specific title in mind so um, I was looking to see what other alphas there were and uh, before I do that I want to get the layers behind my photo so that I know how much space I have to add my title so I'm just going through the papers and um, trying to decide which ones look best. I, I wanted to add something that was blue, um, but the, so I thought about that strawberry paper, but it's a, actually a lot different blue than the rest of the blues on the page. And I thought about this one as well, but again, it's, it's a much different blue and it just didn't quite look right with the blue that I had on the page that the Lindy's Stamp Gang, uh, the magical powders are, are kind of a navy blue and it didn't really work with, with those um, light, robin's egg blues that were in the rest of the papers. So um, I am going to use this uh, polka dot paper from All Heart and um, add that to as the first layer behind my photo. Um, it's, it's mostly white so that adds um, a bit of separation between it and, and the more colorful papers that will be behind it. And because it's the same collection as the paper I've used for my tags, it's that same off-white, that crepe paper off-white. Uh, so it, it's not a stark white, so it'll match um, the other side of the tag if I decide to use that rainbow side. So I'm also adding this pink paper um, because I wanted more pink. I wanted some pink behind my photo, and that was really the only one that matched the letters that are sitting right there um, that I know I want to use for my title. So I thought that was a good way to tie in a bit more of that particular pink color. Uh, before I adhere the tags down, I'm going to add some uh, little rings around the holes just to make them look a little bit more complete, more finished. Um, and I just used a, a punch from my stash, that's a We Are Memory Keepers tag hole punch. Uh, and I punched it from um, that same paper I used behind my photo, the, the black and white polka dot. And on the other side is a, a pink floral with a blue background. And that's what I used on the, uh, the tag with the rainbows. So now I can finally add my title, and uh, I'm going to start with the, the last word of my title. The title's going to be just like grandma. Um, so I'm, I'm working on grandma right now because that um, needs to fit there at the bottom of the page below that tag, and I want to make sure that I leave enough room for it. So I'm just going to start with it. Uh, I get it where I like it, and then um, just stick it down. I'm using a Thicker's Alignment tool. It's just a little flexible plastic ruler that um, lets you kind of move around your title once you have it um, spelled out. Uh, it's, it's pretty handy for, for doing titles when you're not exactly sure where they need to line up. So for the other pieces of my title, I'm using the uh, exclusive puppy alphas that came in the pocket life kit, I believe, um, and uh, just kind of nestled those in around the D in grandma. I'm adding some foam to the back of my photo just to give it a little bit of dimension and, and pop it up off the page. That's just fun foam. You can buy it at any big box store. It has adhesive on one side and you can just cut it down to any size you need it to be. Uh, and I, I have not adhered the photo yet. So the foam is adhered to the photo, but the, the photo is not adhered to the page. So I can move it around if I decide I want to tuck some things underneath it or, um, or move it over a little bit if I need more space to one side or the other. So I'm looking for other bits I can use as embellishments and I found this chipboard piece from All Heart that says you are gold and it matches the color in that striped paper and um, I thought it was absolutely perfect for that little spot so I just went straight ahead and adhered it down. I didn't, I didn't think too much about it, just got it on the page. And now I finally decided that I am indeed going to use the rainbow side of that paper so I, I, I adhered that in place as well. Uh, and now I'm going to go through the exclusive die cuts that came with this kit. Uh, these are designed by Kimberly Hutchinson and they are adorable. I love them so much. I have so many ideas for how to use some of these. Um, but I'm just going to start flipping through them and pick out ones that I think might work and just kind of throw them on the page. And then I'll go back and edit through uh, all of the ones I've pulled out and I'll only end up using um, a few of the ones that I, I pick out of here in the end. So while I'm sorting through these, I'll tell you a little bit about my photo. This is a picture of my niece, Brilly, when she was about 18 months old, and she spends a lot of time with my mom, her grandma, 
and uh, Grandma likes to spend some time on, on her computers, and she always wears her glasses when she does so because she can't see without them. So Brilly likes to put on the glasses and get the computer and pretend she's doing what Grandma does, and it's, it's adorable. Um, of course, she doesn't do that anymore. She's four now, but it was adorable at the time, and I snapped this photo when I was visiting, and I had never scrapbooked it, so I decided to to uh, use this adorable kit to document that story. So that's why the title is Just Like Grandma, and uh, you'll see in my journaling here in a little bit that I, I tell more of the story there. So I'm looking for something to put on that tag on the right-hand side of the page, and I thought that uh, this Girl You Got This sticker would look um, would look good there, but it's too much like the You Are Gold that I already have on the page. Uh, it was too similar, and I, it just didn't look right. Um, so I thought maybe I could layer it with something else to make it look a little bit different. I thought maybe one of the puppy frames even would work. Um, but eventually I decided to try and find something else um, that's a little more, uh, a little less similar to the, the, the elements I already have on the page. Uh, the other problem I had is that these, um, these chipboard pieces are really big. Uh, I think that's, that's a generally an issue with crepe paper. A lot of their embellishments tend to be fairly big, um, but I just couldn't make them work in this spot. They all just seemed way too, way too huge to fit, and uh, the sentiments distracted from the photo and the title, and I didn't want that. So I'm gonna keep looking for something else that will work in that spot. Um, and while I, I think about it some more, I'm going to move on and work on the rest of the page. Um, yeah, try, I was trying that uh, gir girl's rule sticker, and it, again, was just too big. And I thought maybe I could use it at the top of the photo, but I really like that little hello speech bubble, so I'm going to stick with that instead. I think I'm ready to finally adhere that down. Yes, so I um, just added some adhesive and stuck it behind the uh, foam that's behind my photo and that is a fine that is finally adhered down as well and now I'm gonna adhere these little stars these are from that exclusive die cut pack and I just kind of threw them down on the page as I was going through the die cuts and I actually really liked the way that they landed so I wanted to make sure that I got those glued down before I moved them too much and uh, didn't like them as well uh, and then I thought I could also include some of these um, puffy sticker stars that are really similar, but they were too dark. So once I got them on the page, they just looked way too dark in that spot. So I end up peeling those back off um, and I'll find something else to go there here in a little bit. Uh, in the meantime, I wanted to add some of the color that's in the bottom half of the page to the top. So I'm going to use that little piece that I cut off of um, when I was making the tag, cut off of the smaller tag. Uh, and I'm going to tear just a chunk out of the top of the page and add this behind it just so that a little bit of that color peeks out up there and um, it doesn't look so empty there at the top. Um, I also wanted to add some more splatters to uh, the left side of my photo. It again just looked a little blank and I kept looking for some kind of embellishment to add there but it, it really was too small of a space for an embellishment. It just needed some of that that color, that splatter, um, to be added to that side. So uh, I used the purple because that's what I had already mixed up and I thought it would be fine to just use the purple in that spot. And I uh, just splattered with my paintbrush a little bit and then um, dabbed it up in and added some more color where I wanted it. Okay, so I'm looking through the sticker sheets from uh, the All Heart Collection, and I finally find something that will work on this tag. So it's this little clear sticker that says, uh, I think you are the cutest thing ever, or something like that. You're the cutest thing ever, maybe. Um, and because it's clear, it doesn't take up a lot of visual weight, but uh, it, it's enough that it adds a little interest to that spot and gives me some place to add a couple lines of journaling, which is what I'm gonna do now. Uh, I normally don't add my journaling till the very end, but because I know I want to add it right in this spot and I don't want to accidentally put something over the top of it and, and uh, design myself out of a journaling spot again, I'm just gonna go ahead and add it. It's only a few lines. Um, and I didn't think it through very well, so it's not really well worded either, but um, it's fine. It still tells the story. 
And I'm going to uh, go ahead and add the date stamp there as well. Um, you may have seen me write down the date from the back of my photo a little bit earlier before I adhered it down so that I wouldn't forget what the date was since it was a couple of years ago. Uh, and then I'm just gonna do one pass, final pass through the embellishments. I'm gonna end up grabbing the Simple Stories sticker book that we got in the kits this month. And I find a little pair of glasses, which is perfect. So I add that next to my title. There was a little empty space there. And then I'm gonna add a couple of these phrase stickers as well. And then that is pretty much gonna do it for this layout. I hope you enjoyed watching this process. Uh, there are lots of uh, close-up photos coming up uh, so you can see all of the detail up close. And uh, if you haven't already picked up these kits, I will link them all below in the description and uh, you can go get them for yourself. And don't forget to add the June kits to your cart while you're at it or just go ahead and subscribe because these kits are amazing and you aren't gonna wanna miss out on any of them. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this process. I hope you found some inspiration and I will see you back here again very soon. Bye-bye.